All right, guys, doing something a little different than what I normally do. I'm actually in the river. We've got a water release going on from the dam. We've got some current. We've got some cleaner water than we've got down lake. And we've also got a little warmer water, uh, considering it's coming out of one of the upper lakes. It's a little better temperature wise. So I'm going to anchor up, put some baits out, see what we can get. You can see these rods here. I've got these three out already. They've got chicken on them. They're on Santee rigs. I'm going to try out this uh, Hellcat rod. This is one I hadn't had on the boat. I'm sorry that's upside down. We'll spin it around so you can see it the right way. But it's a medium heavy. Don't normally fish with a rod this big. I've got nine ounces of weight on this thing. Normally, I'm not using that much weight where I'm fishing. But I'm going to try pinning this bait. Not a huge bait, but slightly bigger over here near some brush up near the bank, just in case some of these fish are pulling out of this deeper hole that I'm sitting on. And we're going to see how this thing performs. Boom. Again, I wanted to chunk some heavy weights uh, just to see how these things perform with them. Through that without a problem, I'm going to put six ounces on one of these medium action, see how that does. I actually changed my mind. I don't have any super big weights. I'm going to put a four ounce and a two ounce on this one. Six ounces of weight. And these are rated to throw one to six ounces. So it's kind of on the upper end of what it's designed for. But I think it's going to do just fine. Turn on a little bit bigger bait, not super huge. Marked a few fish in here. We're going to see if any of them want to eat. Dude, I don't even think that challenged this rod. Good to go. We'll get the other one out. The Hellcat rods, pink and green rods, are going to be on Carolina rigs laid all the way on the bottom. And these over here, Big Cat Fever trolling rods, they're going to have sand tea rigs on them. So the bait will be floated just up off the bottom. Here's a little trick I'll show you guys. Sometimes these bank sinkers, because of the size of that eye, can be kind of tough. What I do is I put me a piece of monofilament on here. Put it on there. This is 15 pounds. It'll also create you a makeshift breakaway. Uh, in case your sinker gets hung up and you want to pop it loose so and then i just come around with a double overhand knot through here like this that just creates a pinch point there pull that through there like that boom you got a good knot come over here with the stamps clipped it off and i've got a weight that i can add to this snap and if i need more weight or less weight i can easily take it off put on a bigger weight put on a smaller weight add more weight to this one that boom right there's good to go the bay on there decent sized bait not a huge one should get somebody's attention and just for effect i'm gonna add more weight to this again this is actually a little more weight than this rod is weighted for i don't advise you to do this use your tackle rods reels everything for what it's designed for but there's eight ounces of weight on a rod that is designed for one to six. Let's see how it goes. Now, some of y'all may be asking, Dieter, you're using these Hellcat rods, uh, medium and medium heavy rods to chunk out some really big weights because there's a lot of current here. Are you gonna be undermanned if you catch a fish in this current on a medium light big cat figure trolling rod? Well, I'll be honest with you. It will be interesting uh, if I hook a fish in this current on it. Can I get it in? Absolutely, I have no doubt about that. Will it be easier with one of the bigger Hellcat rods? <laughs> Absolutely. Sometimes I just like to see a rod fold over and my sore arms get a little sore. Speaking of that, guess which rod went first? The chicken on the trolling rod. I don't think this is a monster fish, but it'll be fun nonetheless. Probably a small fish. One thing about catching fish in river current, the action on the rod looks a lot better than it actually is. Yeah, this is not a big fish, luckily. As luck would have it, out of three rods, or out of six rods, two different types of bait, I'm gonna catch something on the chicken first. I'll take it, I'm happy to get a fish, man. Happy to get a fish. Come here, guy. Come here, guy. Put you to the side here. A nice hefty channel cat too, guys. Ironically, yesterday's horrible guy trip, the only fish we caught was a channel cat. Now for our lake, it's as big a channel cat as you'll catch in here anymore. It was seven and a half pounds. I was actually giddy and happy, not just because we finally caught a fish, but because of the size of the fish. This one, not quite as big, but I will say this, it does seem, even though the metabolism on these fish really slows down in the wintertime, it seems like if I'm gonna catch a big channel cat, it's gonna happen in the winter. Happy to get one. 
So why did I pick this spot to fish? Well, yesterday I ran a guide trip, was further down the lake, water was colder, it was muddy. I decided to go upstream and try to find something at least clear. You can catch catfish in muddy water, no doubt, but that muddy water generally is gonna be colder. It does not warm up as quick and it just holds that cold. So I decided to come up here. At least I got some clean water. Like I said, it's about 48 degrees up here. We were seeing 42, 43, 44 degree temperatures. I just feel like I got maybe a little bit better conditions. The bottom line is I think the overbite is overall bite is slow. We'll get to that in a minute, but for now I'm gonna sit back and see if I can at least put one fish in the boat up here. All right guys looks like a better bite over here on this Hellcat rod. Oh yeah. It's on top of the water. I don't think he's a giant but he's heading back to the deeper hole there. Try to get him turned over this way. There we go. I don't know if he's wrapped or not. He came straight to the top. Sometimes when they're wrapped, they come to the surface. The thing is, I don't have a back anchor in the way. Got enough current to hold the boat straight. Let me get a net though. So one thing about having some current, it's a one acre kind of day. Straight up and down under the boat. He's right on the bottom. It's not going stupid crazy. There we go. Boy, it's a good bend on this rod. It's a medium action. This is the one with, let's say I put 10 ounces of lead on it whoa there he goes back oh it's a good looking fish good looking fish trying to fool him to the top here there we go there we go this would have been tough on the uh, trolling rod boom he's in the net the gamble paid off guys that's a good looking fish right there get a good solid weight on him great thing about having them in the net is you can weigh them in the net i know that this end of my net's right at two pounds so i can get a total weight subtract that from it i know what i got oh look at this look at this look at this somebody else's hook is in there oh look at that look at that somebody else had that fish hooked on that right there look like it broke off at their knot that may have cost them bad knot tying Yeah, and there he is guys nice blue cat nice fish let's get him back alive good luck guy so why is the overall bite slow well to be honest we've had an unseasonably cold snap of weather as all of you have around the country here in december temperatures that are well below not normal well into what we would consider the coldest temperatures of the winter that we would normally get in january uh here in the south when it is uh below 20 degrees into the single digits two or three nights in a row water temperature is going to drop it's going to have an adverse effect on the fish add into the fact that right before that there were heavy rains and the inflow of cold muddy water and it's just a recipe for bad fishing 